and Cisco's panel on Robotech. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Uh, for those of you who weren't able to make uh, uh, San Diego Comic Con uh, and so forth uh, in recent months, we've got a great presentation for you. We've also got some newer material that uh, uh, we haven't been able to show before. Just to introduce myself, uh, I am Tommy Yoon uh, from uh, Harmony Gold USA. Um, uh, most recent projects I've worked on uh, after like Rotate to Shadow Chronicles uh, is uh, last year's so Rotate to Clone of the Live. And uh, just to guide, bring you guys up to date uh, on digital distribution, uh, uh, Robotech is back online through Amazon, Apple Systems, uh, not yet on uh, Netflix uh, and uh, uh, that online distribution uh, relationship has now been taken over by Lionsgate Entertainment. So for those of you who did briefly see it disappear from the internet, uh, it was just simply, uh, it was a, a changeover of uh, publishing distribution arrangements. So uh, for those of you who are Amazon and Apple users, you can rock it again. Now it used to be really difficult to collect all easier to collect. It was uh, at first 21 DVDs previously from 80 DVD films for 50 minutes of extras. Uh, but uh, our current uh, distributor is a &E. <laughs> And uh, they uh, re-released Robotech a couple of years ago uh, in these really nice box sets that had uh, the individual sagas priced much more aggressively, $39.95 to $49.95 for each of them or a complete set for $99.95, and uh, the number of extras went up. But uh, uh, the 17th set is now mostly uh, out of stock. We had, mo uh, we had updated it, uh, or reprinted it last year through our new distribution partner, which is Lionsgate, uh, beginning of last year. But that printing uh, actually blew out of stock, and so we'll get back more into that later. Um, and then uh, the other current project that we've got, <coughs> you probably get a lot of updates uh, on this uh, if you've been following it closely. Uh, how many of you follow Robotech, uh, the role-playing games from uh, Palladium? All right, this was uh, uh, one of our longest, most successful licenses that we've ever had. And uh, right now it's being re-released. It's in manga size, uh, large format, the Lux Hard cover, and the source books cover uh, each of the Robotech sagas uh, along with the supplemental editions. And uh, they return back to the full-size trade paperback format. Uh, for those of you from experience who've been using the smaller size, uh, the large size did end up, uh, through practical usage, uh, being favored by the fans. And so Palladium has gone back to those uh, sizes. And especially for new editions and reprintings, uh, they're sticking with the full-size trade paperback. Uh, this is the most recent uh, book that they've had come out, the Genesis Pit Source book. And uh, uh, the other big project that they, uh, for those of you who followed last year, uh, anybody uh, into RPG miniatures? It's kind of like the Micro Machine scale. Uh, if you have one of those, uh, that's actually pretty surprising because this is one of the most rarest of the Rotec collectibles. Uh, Playing it put these out uh, during the mid-90s, and this is among one of the rarest Rotec collectibles now. Um, Anyway, when uh, Palladium's uh, license was uh, renewed, we uh, went ahead and uh, expanded uh, their uh, license that they were requesting and requested a couple more categories uh, to add along with traditional uh, pen and paper role playing games. And uh, they uh, brought aboard uh, Ninja Division to design and manufacture to gaming miniatures. And uh, here's an example of those. Uh, this is the Robotech RPG Tactics uh, miniature. This is uh, the way it was uh, prototyped in CAD. And uh, they're, they're basically being CAD prototyped and uh, they're currently being manufactured. And the uh, current uh, target date for it to be released is uh, for the general public is uh, between May and June. Um, <coughs> here's uh, some of the prototypes being displayed at a gaming convention uh, from the play. Uh, this is uh, hand painted, but uh, you also see some uh, unpainted units showing you the detail and what they look like. Uh, now, uh, uh, I'm not going to bore you uh, with the uh, RPG Tactics uh, video, uh, campaign video. Uh, you can actually go onto their uh, Kickstarter page on Kickstarter uh, to find out more about it. Uh, how many of you know about the 
backstory about Palladium and the scandal that they kind of had at the company a few years back. Um, they were going to produce these. Um, they wanted to produce these miniatures, but the company at one point was in danger of not being able to come up with the money to be able to even renew their license. Uh, the company had almost uh, been sent to financial ruin when they found out that their CFO had been embezzling all their money. Uh, and it actually was a big court case. You can actually find it on Wikipedia, find links to the criminal court case online. Um, uh, they ended up having to sue their CFO, uh, and uh, apparently it looked like they were only able to get pennies back on the dollar because the CFO had blown all the money. And uh, so essentially, uh, they had hundreds of thousands of dollars in reserves, and it was all gone. And they didn't know if they were even going to have the capital to produce this product line. And so they decided to go to Kickstarter. Uh, to ask the fans to help raise the money so that they could produce these things to raise the capital to produce this. And uh, to make a long story short, they needed to raise about $70,000 to get this off the ground. They ended up raising uh, $1.4 million. And so in exchange, instead of just producing the basic product line, uh, they created all these Kickstarter stretch goals um, to even not just make the commonly seen mecha like the battle pods and the destroids and the veritex, uh, they're going to produce all the rare, rare mecha such as Ghost Chrome that's barely seen in the series, and even the, the uh, early warning uh, radar veritex that you see like for one Force of Arms episode. So they're uh, they're making all this rare mecha, and uh, they were uh, scheduled to start shipping in December. Uh, but what had happened was when they started, when they sent this material off to manufacturing, uh, basically um, the manufacturer kind of uh, said, holy moly, because uh, because of all their stretch goals with the amount of money they made, uh, the scope of what they were going to manufacture far exceeded their original uh, goals. And so uh, uh, even though they had sent a lot of material off to manufacturing, and they are manufacturing it right now, um, they don't think they're going to be done with their run all the units because they have so many units to make it sold on the May and June. Now, uh, the other project we've been working on for a while is the book tech novelizations. Uh, we're in the process of updating these. Um, um, a few years ago, Delray took all our print uh, novels and they uh, uh, consolidated them into these big omnibus editions. So these four collections contain the entire book tech saga. You, you can get those online for your Kindle and your uh, uh, iPad. Now, uh, we've been in the process of updating all the novelizations. So now they're also going to include uh, appendices, so you can compare differences between the novel universes, the comic universes, the television. So like where there's differences between the universes, there's going to be all this editor additional editorial information included in there. And, uh, we're not just bringing those novels to uh, the online platforms, we're also uh, adding the uh, in-between novels as well. So uh, stuff like this Entrati Rebellion, uh, the in-between stories that were essentially bridging the different generations of Robotech together, those are all being brought to uh, the ebook form as well. So uh, we look forward to seeing those soon. And uh, calendars, uh, back in print uh, since uh, 2012, for the first time, and this is the most recent one, 2014 calendar. Uh, they're totally awesome. Uh, we've actually got a few here to give away, so uh, if you guys have some good questions for us or uh, want to grab some freebies after the panel, let's see if we're at. And uh, another project that the, uh, Steve Yoon over at Harmony Gold is working on, he's been working on this for quite a while, uh, working with the original materials. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, how many of you know the backstory about the two different tapes, the master tapes? So you don't know? The, okay. I, I, I just have to check because, um, you know, for, as we cover the story around different cities around the country, we want to make sure that everybody's familiar with this. The master tape you see on the left is what we use to create the CD remastered 20th anniversary edition of the Road to Complete Soundtrack. And a few years ago, when we decided to um, uh, make a more complete set, because every time we say we've got the most complete set ever, you know, some fans go, what about this song? What about that song? You know, I saw a heard fragment of it on the show, and, you know, can you track it down? And so we decided to go a little further in terms of hunting for the original materials. 
we find another man's critique, the other one on the right. According to the inventory, they had the same catalog number. They had the same catalog number. And if you look at the covers, um, they had the same song list. And they, it was even in the same handwriting by the same engineer. So why is it that one master tape is a half inch thick and the other master tape is two inches thick? You know, we were wondering what was the deal. And you know, you know, you've seen magnetic tape, VHS, whatever. And we had never ever seen a master tape this thick before. I mean, the only time I've ever seen tape media this thick was in that brainstorm movie uh, uh, with Christopher Walken oh. you know, a couple <laughs> decades ago. Oh, if you remember that. Uh, anyway, we found a gentleman with a tape deck that could play this. And uh, according to this gentleman, there were only two of these tape decks left in the country that were able to play these two inch tapes. And I said, um, how do you know that there's only two of them, this specific type of tape deck left? And he says, well, me and the other guy, we know each other. <laughs> So, uh, oh yeah, if you look on top of the tape deck, there's 24 little dials on it. Uh, you know, levels. Essentially what that means is when we were recovering the data off the tape, it recovered 24 separate tracks, meaning the saxophone, the percussion, the horns, the piano were all isolated from one another in this master tape. So that was what was unique about it. That's why the tape was so thick. Now, you know what that means? Because we had all the elements isolated like that, we could do karaoke editions. <laughs> so that's what we did with the 25th anniversary EPs. Um, we had so much material, instead of releasing it as a monolithic release, we've been releasing it piecemeal in these little EPs. And so this edition of We Will Win has like half a dozen different variations of We Will Win with the vocals, without the vocals, extended, short. You know, guitar solo, whatever. So, uh, actually, let me play one of them for you. Alright, the way to love. Take one. Soundtrack. 
and the director, uh, the most recent person uh, to have uh, been announced in the trades working on this is uh, New Get View. Uh, and Royalty Merchandising, of course, is through uh, WD. And uh, just for you guys to get a little sense of who is Nick Matthew, he's a relative newcomer. Uh, he's so, using uh, Stargate music. Huh? The music from the Stargate soundtrack. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, I'm, guys, the uh, work looks awesome, so uh, looking forward to uh, seeing more from this gentleman. And now, what your fans keep asking is what about more animated Robotech? Now that we've uh, uh, wrapped up work on Robotech Love and Life last year, what's going on next? Uh, how many of you are. Uh, how many of you saw Rotate Love Little Life? That's it? How many of you are surprised that Robotech Love Little Life exists? Didn't hear about it. Wow. Okay. I just can't find it. Alright, uh, Love Little Life, uh, just to give you a little bit of background information, is a OVA uh, by the creators of Mospita, the third segment of the Robotech series. Uh, Mospita is also known as the and after Mospita went off the air in Japan, they produced an OVA of additional material for the Mospita universe. And this was never licensed into Robotech. And uh, when I spoke to Carl Masick a few years back before he passed away about this, uh, he said, yeah, you know, ever since 1986, he had actually tried to pick up the rights for this. And when we communicated with Tatsunoko, uh, we found out that they never licensed it anyway. So, so uh, we had to do some uh, digital restoration to Love Little Live to match uh, the restoration work we had done for the remastered DVDs of Robotech. And uh, on the left you see uh, the original material from uh, that we received from Japan on the right, uh, a lot of the cleanup work we had done. And uh, the end result of the uh, restoration and uh, reconstruction work was Robotech Love Little Live. Um, uh, the people that we had brought aboard to work on this uh, included, uh, at the right, Gregory Stebop. He was the uh, uh, lead writer on the uh, original series. Uh, if you look at the writing credits, he's uh, listed first among the writers. And uh, he was also one of the dialogue directors, and so he directed the dialogue for uh, this one. So we got as many of the original uh, cast and crew as possible, uh, which includes uh, uh, Frank Catalano in the back, the voice of Rand. And we also tracked down Susie London, the voice of Rook. And so she reprised her role as Rook. And Barbara Goodson reprised her role as Sarah, the Indian princess. And uh, that's uh, Alexander Kenworthy as the Regis. And here we have uh, Cam Clark reprising his role as Lantern. And this is actually some footage from uh, inside the studio. Uh, uh, fans wanted to see this meld with their uh, uh, 
you know, classic cell style animated a lot more, um, how would you say, um, uh, cohesively. And so uh, one of the things uh, you'll see here is uh, with cell rendering and shading and compositing techniques, uh, we were able to uh, get a result that was uh, uh, very pleasing for this uh, uh, production. Here's a sequence of a garfish cruiser, and this is an animatic that was done. And, you know, it's a good CG model. But what we wanted to do was we wanted to have it feel like an old school anime scene. And so this is uh, after um, all the effects and cell style shading was added. And uh, we also included a new documentary as well. 
well, uh, Rotec Inside Story, which covers uh, some of the work done on Rotec back in 85. A lot of fans like that we do do more of these making of type clips, uh, but one of the requests we had was what could we find uh, making of wise that was actually recorded back in the 80s, and we did find this one, uh, which was produced by uh, student uh, filmmaker uh, Derek O'Donnell. Robotech has a cast of actors who perform the voices for the characters. Reba West is one of them. One of, I guess, the main difference is that live acting is on screen where you're actually um, in front of the camera, um, like, you know, in a sitcom or uh, on stage or uh, in a film. Whereas uh, voiceover is anything that's being done in a recording studio for, um, say, cartoons or uh, commercials on radio. So there, that's an interview with Reba West uh, back in the 80s uh, while they were working on Road Tech. Uh, so uh, that's also included in the box set. Oh, by the way, speaking of which... Oh, yeah. Oh, actually, that's actually... Yeah, I'm sorry right now. No, we're on camera time. Do you want to see most of this? The making of Robotech from back in the 80s? Sure. Do you, are you guys interested? Yes, no. Here, let's see a vote of hands. Bring it on. All right, all right you know what? We'll, we'll, we'll let it run until uh, we hit, hit our uh, 10 minute warning. So, here. Okay. I can choose between a filet or a ribeye, but this time you don't have to. You can get both. <laughs> and, let's see, who is high ranking Keith and Roy? Roy's going to kick the crap out of Lotor. We'll probably rather see high ranking Romance Chris and Lotor. And uh, Rob Paul Warner says we have Yes, we have a lot of responses. You can uh, so it's a throwback to the 80s series. Um, one of our goals with this is uh, we're going to include monsters and robots, bullets, mice, and uh, here's a sneak peek of some of the artwork going into it. Uh, actually, you know what? Um, you can find out more at our comic and makeup panel later at 5 o'clock. Here, let me, before we run out of time, give you a super quick rundown. Uh, here we go. Here's a sneak peek. Uh, here's some of the classic Robot the Voltron movies that were released before. Some were pretty good, and so were uh, the Robotech movies, but a lot of fans asked us, let's make it look like a real 80s throwback. So uh, uh, here's the exclusive preview. Here's uh, issue one. Uh, for this, uh, I actually uh, went and watched every single Japanese episode uh, to get some of the small details of the different storylines and different continuities. And here's some of the artwork coming from Elmer DeMasso. It's unbelievably awesome. Here's his line art, some of the uh, design work that he's done. This is from the first issue. Uh, and then, uh, here's uh, how it looks like when it's finished cleaned up. And now, uh, from the second issue, uh, we actually go more into the backstories. Uh, if you're familiar with the Voltron universe, uh, you know, what's up with the king, uh, what happened to him, uh, what's up with Lotor's mom? How come she's blonde and looks like Princess Allura? Uh, and uh, whatever happened to Koran's family? Uh, whatever happened to Roy Fogler's family? Why was he adopted by Pop Seeker in the Rotec universe? Uh, you know, we even have that. You know, the uh, little, little peek into the uh, military career of Pop's Hunter and Roy's dad. Uh, and uh, new mecha uh, designs. We had to change some designs uh, on some of the mecha accessories for the Rotec Voltron crossover because Voltron is actually about 200 feet tall, uh, much larger in scope than uh, the Veritex. So here's a custom fast pack design just for our series, which you'll see a little more of soon. And so uh, that'll be coming up soon. And so. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we got a little bit of time for questions before they kick us out. So, uh, anybody got questions? Questions? Yes, any, sir. Any? Uh, I know you talked about the live action movie. Yeah. What's the at this point? No release date. Uh, no release. Uh, uh, that release date will be set by Warner Brothers Pictures. So. Uh, so no when, yeah. When that happens, you're going to hear about it. In any rumor about the? Uh, I, 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 won't, I won't even start with us about that. I, I won't speculate. It's, but it's still being worked on, right? Yeah, yeah that's still working on. Yeah, that's uh, Leonardo. Those yeah, rights are there. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, is Warner Brothers involved with uh, Shadow Rising? Right. Or they have a say? No, no, no. Uh, Warner Brothers, uh, their focus is on live action. Uh, 
uh, not animation. Uh, yes, sir. Any chance for some updated mech designs coming out for any of the Robotech stuff? Uh, yes, actually, um, it's so new I didn't get to add it here. At Toy Fair in February, Toy Nami's going to be unveiling some new stuff. So, over tank, over tank. <laughs> uh, yes, sir. Anything that can be done with the Macross license specifically? Specifically for like Macross? Yeah, actually, yes. that's, that, oh, that one, uh, that's going to require some work because that license has not all been worked out because that's held, uh, as far as I know, uh, the IP holder in Japan is a uh, big one for the newer Macross wars, and a lot of that is licensed for Bandai in Japan. Uh, the US license for that has not been worked out for those Macross wars. Uh, actually, for those of you who answer questions, come up and get some stuff. Because we got some stuff for you. Oh. In exchange for <coughs> take your choice, whatever you want. Calendar. Just take one of those. Yeah. Alright, any other questions? Yes? No. Alright, this has to do with uh Cesar Torturo, you know how he's doing the fan film. Uh, legally yeah. he's been shut down with uh, a season and desist. Yeah. Uh, is Harmony Gold gonna comment on that? Uh you know, well, we did say to fans, well, what we had said to fans is uh, generally it would be non commercial. Uh, you know, they'll make a change hands in here, like stay under the radar. Generally, they can find there was something that came up that, uh, you know, I personally didn't expect. And so, uh, but I can't comment on it though, because you know, I'm, I'm not part of the legal team. Uh, that, that's something that they'll answer at a later time. Like, if you do have questions about it, uh, the right person to contact if you have like questions in terms of the public statements uh, is actually Kevin McKeever. He's our uh, publicity director over at Harmony Gold, so you're welcome to contact him. Uh, any other questions? Are we out of time? Okay.